What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Log On Games podcast for Friday, April the 7th. On this episode today, we're going to be talking about this potential Sony handheld that's going to come out. Uh, give you some updates on Summer Game Fest. A lot of showcases announced. Uh, Matthew and Ivy last week, I think, talked about the death of E3. That was a big that was a big topic last week, Andrew. I don't know if you heard, but they canceled for like what the third year in a row now, second year. In I a did row, hear I it. Yep. But uh, you know, I think I think this is the final nail in the coffin. Jeff Keighley finally put the last nail in the coffin for E3. But he killed, uh, he killed Dracula. He killed so her. Um, so, but that being said, the spirit is still within. Uh, so we're going to give you some updates on the showcases that have been announced and ones that may be coming. And then, uh, just for Matthew, since he's not here, we're going to be talking about FIFA for probably three seconds. Three seconds, just for Matthew. (laughs) (laughs) Um, with me today, you can find him at twitch.tv backslash brown berserker. We have... Andrew with us on the podcast. It's on me, Andrew. And me. And him. <laughs> we both saw the Mario movie last night. I did What'd not you know think? you went. That's cool. I loved it. Nice. I loved it. Me too. The, um, they played it. Okay, so it's something I talked about last night with my wife and uh, uh, some other people online is the fact that I they played it safe. And I mean that in regards to it was a direct collaboration with Nintendo Japan. So yeah. I don't think that we're going to put any like adult sexual innuendos that, yeah. you know, the adults could be like, ha ha ha. You know, there was some dark humor in there, which is really funny, mm. but like it was awesome. I mean, like, you'll know what I'm talking about. At the beginning of the movie, like uh, the ringtone on the phone. Yeah. Was the, the game eggs. Yeah. was like the GameCube. And I was just like, oh my God. Every time there was some type of Easter egg that I saw or went off, like Joker grin. Yeah. It was, I was just like, <laughs> dude, this is so cool. This is so that's cool. What, that's what Emily said. She's like, you were laughed at like random times when nothing funny was happening. I was like, that's because they did something. Like, usually it was the music. Oh my like God. It'd be yeah. like a medley of, of some a bunch of the levels or something whenever people in the theater saw something that they recognized you just saw fingers pointing out yeah <laughs> it was just like ah, oh, dude it was so cool they killed it i thought they absolutely killed it um i think they played it safe again this is not a yeah. uh, good or a bad thing just exactly. as far as just the story goes yep like uh it was almost like an origin story and so i i definitely hope in the future like we get so maybe we get like some crazy galaxy jumping thing happening. We get Rosalina involved and who knows? Mario Kart stuff was my favorite. I know we've seen that in the trailer, so this isn't really a spoiler, but a lot of Mario karting happening. And I love so it. it's funny you say that. Like I like what, what I can't stand nowadays with trailers is I believe they show too much, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of the stuff that we saw, if I saw it in the moment, I would have flipped out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I think they're showing too much. And I was saying to my wife, I also thought it was pretty fast paced. Like there wasn't, there, oh, wasn't yeah, yeah. there wasn't much like downtime or quiet time. It was just like, boom, 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 yeah. boom. The the story just kept progressing, which is not a bad thing per se, but there wasn't very, there wasn't a lot of quiet moments, you know? Yeah. So. It was a very, it was a kid's moment in that yeah. regard. It's like, we don't need to explain why we're doing yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a fun time. So I'm good. excited to get some, uh, I'm excited for the next one. See where they go. How did you see it? Was it just normal or 3D or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, so like I kind of went back and forth on whether we were going to see it last night or not. Okay. Uh, so by the time we were like, yeah, let's just go see it. Normally, I want to go to the big Dolby theater. Yeah. But it's like sold out. Anything with a recliner, uh, sold out. Gotcha. Unless you want to sit in like the very front row. Yeah. And then also what was sold out, which was disappointing, was at AMC, they had the $15... Uh, popcorn bucket that was the coin oh and i was like I'm, the whole way there i'm like i'm getting it i'm getting because i had a birthday um coupons Gift co- you know, oh, like coupons, on your amc okay. like little okay. account it's like oh yeah, it's your yeah. birthday so you, i get a free large popcorn and a free large drink all right nice and so i was like 
you're basically seeing the movie for free at that point, you know. Uh, <laughs> but I was like, I'm upgrading that popcorn to the 10 when we get there. And yeah, they yeah. didn't have any. They were like, sorry, man, we're sold out. I was like, dang it. And then all the way in the back kitchen, I saw one. Or Emily saw one. She's like, he lied to you. There's one back there. So I asked the lady, I was like, is that one back there for sale? Because I'll buy it right now. And she's like, someone ordered that online. I was like, oh. So you can I order hoping- it, I guess through the app and then they would just like give it to you when you I was it. hoping the story was going to end with like I got it I succeeded <laughs> that sucks dang man I looked on uh, online afterwards and people were selling them on eBay for like $50 which is pretty sounds crazy. about right that sounds about right yeah but uh we'll see they also had a Dungeons and Dragons one which was like a D20 I don't know I don't know it was a die the die like, yeah I talked to it and I was, that one was cool That's I didn't want cool. that one yeah one of it was a good movie. I was excited. Emily's favorite character was the dog. Awesome. Oh man, that was so funny. So <laughs> funny. It was a uh, beautiful film too. My God, that yeah. CG was so. That's why wild. I wanted to see it in Dolby. I was just like, yeah. I wish I was seeing this in Dolby, but it was still real good. Um, that's it. That's our podcast. No, we want to welcome everybody <laughs> to the Log On Games <laughs> podcast. This is a weekly show in which our hosts discuss a variety of news topics from new games, big announcements, events, and more. New episodes upload every Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you want to get your podcast at. Or you can watch us in YouTube or in video form on youtube.com backslash at logongames. You can see my nipple right now. I mean, I... If you're listening to this and didn't that see just, it, you, yeah, that just happened. You need to go to our YouTube, <laughs> hit subscribe. If you saw a nipple and you're not subscribed, you have to hit subscribe. It's the new rule. That's gonna be wow. the new rule for all of our podcasts. <laughs> wow. From now just <laughs> till the dawn of time. And whenever I upload it, there's a part where it's like made for kids or not. I'm gonna make sure this one's made for kids. You know what I mean? It's anatomy. It's okay. I say no every single time, just okay. because I'm like it's not really made for kids. You know. But if you're a kid, you can watch it. I mean, we're we're which is we, weird. We got pretty. We, we got some clean mouths in here. We're it's. I think it's for kids. Yeah, but it's like I don't understand. The, I think that what that is for is like, is this a children's thing? You know, like so like they're watching like this, they're watching like made bl- for children. Yeah, but they're watching like Blues Clues clips, and on the yeah. recommended, it's like <laughs> log on games. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it confuses me because it doesn't give any like. Oh, it doesn't give any like tell me exactly what it's for. It's yeah. just like, is this made for kids or not? And I was like, we didn't make this being like, we want children to watch this, but a child could watch this and it would be yeah. no problem. You don't so know if I, we're going to be like secluded to this, like this yeah. world over here. <laughs> gotcha. Anyways, you can follow us at Log On Games <laughs> on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. If you have any questions, you can get them in there. We also have a link tree in the bio where you can join our Discord or find our YouTube easier or whatever it is you want to do. Mm-hmm. Let's get to the topics today. This comes from Forbes.com. Report, Sony may be working on a new PlayStation handheld after all. Two days ago, I wondered out loud if it was wise for Sony to keep investing loads of time and resources into a uh, relatively niche VR space instead of returning to the PSP Vita era for another handheld, given the success of the Switch and the Steam Deck. Well, be careful what you wish for, I suppose. A new report from high-profile leaker Tom Henderson at Insider Gaming says that Sony is doing just that. He's the only one reporting this for now, so as ever, take what's being said with caution. But here's what he's laying out. We got some bullet points here. Sony is indeed working on a new handheld Codenamed the Q Light. Oh, what a great name. <laughs> it looks like a PS5 controller, but with an 8 inch LCD touchscreen in the middle. It will include adaptive triggers and haptic feedback like the DualSense. So, I mean, I guess it's going to have a 25 minute battery life. Yeah. I, I, I literally was about to like crack some joke <laughs> along those lines. Yep. I mean, I have, I'm going to show you on here. DualSense Edge, everybody. DualSense Edge. Got little, got these buttons. I don't have the other buttons in the back. Whatever. But um, went through a bunch of different Pro controllers. I did not want to get the DualSense Edge, but the other Pro controllers that I tried just like 
and just weren't up to snuff, you know what I mean? And one of them, Ooh. you had to have a Windows PC to update, and I did not. I do not. So I was like, well, dang it. And so I ended up getting the DualSense Edge. If I get Stick Drift, which I've had Stick Drift in every single DualSense I've had, four of them, four of them. Oof. If I get Stick Drift, I can at least pop the stick out and buy a replacement one for $20 instead of, you know, just not just being out of warranty and just being screwed, which is what it's been in the past. But the battery life is atrocious. It just is. I feel like every single day I have to charge it. Like, I've been playing a lot of Destiny, and Andrew, this, this is a, a gamer thing, but I still have not finished God of War Ragnarok. Okay. I still have not gotten back to Hogwarts Legacy. Same. Same. And I also got the Resident Evil 4 remake. So I was like, I haven't finished two games. I might as well buy Resident Evil 4 remake. Like idiot. <laughs> so I have these three great, like oh 10 out of God. 10 games I need to get back to. But what did I, what have I chose to do with my time? I started my f- first ever brand new character on Destiny. I've only ever had one warlock since, oh, D- since, snap. since Alpha D1. Okay. I've only ever just had one warlock. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, you know what? I have a bunch of friends that are titans. I'm going to make a hunter. And so now I'm just going through the very beginning as a hunter now with with all these other games. Destiny's a great <laughs> just, game. Just sitting and just sitting there being like, yo, we're like the best. We're going to be like game of the year contenders over here. And I'm like, you know what? I need to start a hunter now after 10 years. <laughs> See anyways, that says, that says a lot right there. That anyway, so yeah, every it seems like every time I get done playing Destiny, I look down. It's like, oh, I need to charge my dual sense, of course. Mm. Anyways, moving on, back to the handheld. It supports adapt, adaptive streaming up to 1080p and 60 frames per second, requiring constant internet access for remote mm. play. It is not streaming games from the cloud; it is streaming them from your existing PlayStation Five. The Q Lite may be released before the PS5 Pro, which, according to this report, is aiming for a holiday 2024 release, which be which would be roughly on schedule with the PS4 Pro's time. So, if this is the case, it could be you know as soon as like this holiday or maybe early like spring next year. Um, that's where the report ends. It's possible that if this does exist, it could be debuting during Sony's big non-E3 summer showcase this year. Or perhaps could be uh, safe for the Game Awards if it's not going to arrive uh, this holiday. Andrew, go. Just what what thoughts? Just just give them to me. So you're basically telling me it's the PS5 U. Okay, so yeah. this is this is the Wii U, right? Like, I think it's could, closer could... to like uh, the the PlayStation Stadia. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. I can't I can't leave my house and and play these games unless I have like I'm connected to the same consoles. That, that, that's what you're saying, right? You have to be connected to the internet. So if you were traveling, you know, and you were in a hotel okay, with internet okay. or something, you could play it then, I guess. Uh, this is this is bookie. Like, let let's get back to the PSP. You know, we're not. Y- I'm pretty sure with the tech nowadays, you can create a PSP that can outperform uh, a Nintendo Switch. Like, what are, what are we doing yeah. here? What This is a waste of money. This is a waste of money, in my opinion. I 100% agree with you, Andrew. <laughs> this is such a waste of money. <laughs> if So on the Vita, for the PS4, there was remote play. Like, yes, you could do this. I do know that, yes. So why... If this, like, if the remote play thing is it, like, this is it. It's a remote play device. You can travel with it, but you need to have Wi-Fi in order to stream games. Then I'm like, I don't want, I don't need this. Like, no one needs to do that. I mean, there'll be a, there'll be three people that buy it and use it for that. There just will be. Or someone, because if Stadia's told us anything, or Xbox Cloud Streaming has told us anything, which I've used Game Pass on my phone, from time to time and it works for what it is like Ooh. you're not going to be playing anything that you actually need like reaction yeah. time to do you be playing indie games single player indie games uh jrpgs l- games with lots of menus it's great but if you're playing any action game or first person shooter or anything like that it's just it's not it it's not gonna work 
So I'm fine with remote play being a feature. But if you're telling me like I can't, even if it's 50 gigs on this thing, that would be more of a sell to me than, than what we have right here. Like even if it's like you can download stuff, but you only have 50 gigs worth of download stuff and battery life is going to be awful anyway. So it doesn't matter. That's what I'm saying. Like, this is strictly just a streaming device, right? Period. Yeah. yeah. Like, at least let me download Fortnite and play it on the go. Yeah. The like, I would at least be something or a bunch of indie games or whatever. But yeah, it's weird. It would make even more sense if it was like you could market it as the PlayStation Plus catalog to go. You yes. Know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, if it's on the catalog, you can download it and play it. Otherwise, you can just remote play. The only yeah. way this thing succeeds is it's forty nine ninety nine. That's it. I agree, but it's a PlayStation. <laughs> I, I, I I I just don't know where they thought we want this. I just I I just don't. I just don't. I I'm not gonna believe that this. I'm I'm not saying this is not real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I believe at any given time, Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox probably have multiple like things going on that probably not sure. the light of day. But yeah. they just want to make sure. So I'm not going to believe that this is a real product until I freaking see it in somebody's hand. You yeah, know what I mean, uh, I would put I would put money that this never sees the light of day. <laughs> what if this leak it? was intentional Could by be? Sony for feedback? Then that that's even this tells them how stupid they really are. Like, let's leak <laughs> this so we can see if people want it. Like, why would we want it? Why would anybody want this? So we can I can sit on my couch and play Stadia. No. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm what if it. like what if your wife wanted to watch Netflix? Can you still play the game on that device on even though she's using the PS5 to watch Netflix? Possibly. Okay. But at that point. Are you really going to do that? <laughs> Still. <laughs> That's how it was on the Wii U. It was like, you know what? I'll just use I'll just play it on this while you do something else or whatever. It's like, no, I'm not. Yeah, I don't think I use that feature on the Wii U. And again, like the Steam Deck, I agree with you. Like they could make a, not even necessarily a Steam Deck competitor, but just make a PlayStation Steam Deck. S- similar price point. In your PlayStation, so you could probably add a 50, 50 bucks to that. But like, it would play games like you know, like you can play the the best games that come out mm-hmm. now on the Steam Deck. You're gonna get a fifty minute battery life if you play it at sixty frames, whatever. But you can play yeah just about any game that comes out now on the Steam Deck. So, if you're Sony, you don't have to spend time and resources to make exclusive just handheld games like they had to on the Vita. You can make what you're making and then just dumb it down for your PlayStation Steam Deck. Yeah. That would be a better idea, I think. But I don't know. Weird. That's all I saw when I saw this. I, I, this I'm, I'm sitting here like, like, man, my opinion was kind of harsh for something that's a hypothetical. But that's just how I feel, okay? I mean, I agree. <laughs> if If... What we're going to talk about next is showcases and stuff. And if PlayStation has a showcase here in the next two months and they announce this thing, I'm going to be like, man, this is really dumb. We have, we are now fully, we'll be fully committed back to PlayStation 3 PlayStation. Where it's like, we have great games on the this console that's too expensive. We have this VR that's more expensive than the PS5. Yeah. And then we have this handheld Stadia stream device that no one wants. And it's four hundred dollars. <laughs> Give Jeez. us our money. And it's we'll like, see. All right. all right, PlayStation, you have fun with that. All right, we're gonna move on here. Um, give you guys uh, some summer game fest stuff. Last week, I, like I said, E three is dead. It is gone. They canceled it for this year. I don't think it's ever gonna come back. Personally, maybe it, it's definitely not around june like if e3 happens again i feel like it'll be like a winter thing maybe or even like a spring thing or something i don't know was there a statement uh, for the cancellation or it was just like it's canned they came they, out with a can uh, with a statement but it was basically okay. just like it's canceled um they didn't say that they were going to be doing things in the future or not 
So mm, okay. Um, I feel like if E3 comes back, it'll just be basically like a PAX. You know what I mean? Like, but who knows? Who knows? But as of now, E3 as we know it is gone. Summer Game Fest is here to take its rightful place as king of the games of the summertime. Basically. Uh, but this article comes from videogameschronicle.com. Sony Interactive Entertainment will reportedly hold a PlayStation showcase ahead of this summer's planned video game events. That's according to Giant Bomb journalist Jeff Grubb, who has regularly reported on planned summer events ahead of their annou- announcements in the past. He was also right on the state of play that happened earlier this year, whatever. According to Grubb, a PlayStation showcase will be held sometime before the Summer Game Fest event on June the 8th, the Xbox and Bethesda showcase on June 11th, and Ubisoft Forward on June 12th. The report follows this week's confirmation that the planned return of a physical E3 event has been canceled due to a lack of support from major publishers. This was a difficult decision because of all the effort we and our partners put toward making this event happen, but we had to do what's right for the industry and what's right for E3, mm. uh, a.k.a. no one wanted to be a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my God. So this is Jeff Grubb. He does this every year. If you're not familiar with Jeff Grubb, he has a uh, basically a list of all the events that's happening pretty much constantly. Um, his tweet says, E3 is dead, and I killed it, and now I'm going to honor it by holding holding it up Weekend at Bernie 3 style. Alongside okay. Jeff Grubb's Summer Game Mess. Thank you to all the Jeff Grubb Summer Game Mess partners for participating, whether you want to or not. And he has a uh, picture here that I'm trying to click on and get to. But it's day. Okay, here we go. So he has, before Summer Game Fest, PlayStation Showcase. June 8th, Summer Game Fest Showcase. June 9th and 10th are <clears throat> Keeley's Days of Play. Uh, June 11th will be the Xbox Plus Bethesda Showcase. And then directly after that will be the Starfield Direct. And June 12th is the Ubisoft Forward. That is all we have at the moment. I would assume uh, Nintendo Direct will be somewhere in here. Uh, but not yet announced. But mm-hmm. I'd be shocked if it wasn't. They do it every year. So it looks like for the first time in like three years around the beginning of June, we're going to have PlayStation, Xbox and a Nintendo showcase. Finally, it's been so long. That that would be a pummeling right there. But exciting news. We haven't had a PlayStation showcase in a year and a half. So this will be a giant one. And I think, I don't know if we talked about on the, on the podcast before. Here's another insider that tweeted out about this PlayStation showcase being like PlayStation's here to like put all their previous showcases like to bed. Like this is going to be the big, this is going to be a big daddy. So big words, big words. What do you think we, we will see? So basically everything that the PlayStation showcases have announced in the past have pretty much come to light now, minus like a couple things. But for the most part, we don't know what PlayStation is working on. Yeah. So, it could be anything. I'm I'm feeling um I'm feeling Silent good. Hill remake. Um I guess could Konami be. Konami could be a part of it, so maybe something Metal Gear. Um Blue Point Games, what are they doing? That's true. You yeah. I mean? Since yep. since Demon Souls, they've been doing something to do in their own game, oh, or they doing yeah, another doing remake. Something. They're doing something, you know. <laughs> uh, we'll definitely see Spider-Man 2. I'm sure they'll either lead or end the show because that's supposedly coming out this fall. It's a still. big boy. Maybe we'll see Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have the claws. I, I don't know why I did this. Like, claws are just going <laughs> to pop out of my... <laughs> it was a sound for me. You were like... Psst. Yeah. Psst. Like, If claws Psst. really would have popped out right now, your mind would have been blown up. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked around like I have claws beside I know, me. right? He's oh, like, yeah. crap, they're by the gong. Where's the where's the claws? <laughs> the original wooden one, you know what I mean? Psst. Only two. Only two. I'm sorry. I like I like I like when he had the bone claws. This bit didn't work. The bone claws. 
Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for this and I'm ready for them to just freaking announce it. You know what I mean? Preferably, I want it to be like June 7th so that we have like Interesting. PlayStation Showcase, Summer Game Fest, and then like two days later, the Xbox One, maybe Nintendo. I would love just a day of showcase a day for like four days. That'd be great. Oh, yeah. I'd love Reactions that. Reactions out the butthole. Out <laughs> the butthole. You heard me, right? Um, I don't know. Yeah, that... so maybe we get another ghost. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Something. Um, whatever, uh, I don't know. We'll definitely do a predictions episode. Um, before all this goes, before mm-hmm. all this goes down. Now, if it's around the same time that Summer Game Fest, like the June 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th stuff is, then we'll probably just do one massive predictions episode. But it's also possible PlayStation's like, we're doing this May the 15th, everybody. And we're like, all right, great. You couldn't have just waited two weeks to be a part of everything you have to have your own little moment in the sun yeah man but get the jump jump on the gun right jump on the gun um am i the only one that's seeing this right now on twitter that the twitter icon is the doge dog what <laughs> <laughs> I was looking, I was like, what's, so when I clicked on that tweet, just a big doge dog popped up in the middle, like when it was loading. And I was like, that's weird. I am not seeing that. At least not on my phone. I'm seeing it on the desktop. Maybe it's not on my, maybe it's not on the app. Yeah, I am not seeing that. It's definitely on the desktop. My brain is not playing tricks on me. Um, but I digress. Exciting stuff. I'm excited. We are, it is April 7th by the time you're listening to this, maybe even later. <gasps> it's always so we Christmas are, for us around that time. Yeah. Two months away from craziness. It's been, we've had, we've had a lot of games come out the first half of this year. I mean, we've had some downtime for a month or so of nothing coming out. No news, no nothing. And it's about to just uppercut us. It's going to be a good time. We will be doing reactions. We will be doing predictions. For sure. All right, let's get to Matthew's uh, topic of the day, even though he's not here. This Enjoy comes this from, minute. <laughs> this comes from <laughs> GameSpot.com. EA has officially revealed new details on its 2023 soccer game, EA Sports F- FC. <laughs> the first entry in a new franchise without the FIFA branding. After it ended its partnership with the International Soccer Governing body last year, EA announced a new franchise based on the global sport that will still have the same or similar lineup of players, teams, stadiums, thanks to the licensing deals it has in place. More details on EA Sports FC will be revealed in July. But this week, EA added that the game will become a platform to create, innovate, and grow new football experiences when it launches later this year. I mean, if if there was if there was ever a time I've I've ever been excited for this franchise, it's in this single moment right here. Yeah, man. Um, the FIFA president said this. We have some drama now. Uh oh. I can assure you that the only authentic real game that has the FIFA name will be the best one available for gamers and football fans. The FIFA name is only global is the only global original title. FIFA 23, FIFA 24, FIFA 25, and FIFA 26, and so on. The constant is the FIFA name, and it will remain forever. It will remain forever and remain the best. (sighs) Heavy stuff. Yeah, like my deodorant. My deodorant is burnt off. Like (laughs) that's some fire, man. Uh, I will say this: being a sports game person. I haven't played a FIFA game in quite some time. But um, I don't remember what the last FIFA game I actually played was. It was when me and Matthew still lived under the same roof. And I was like, I'll beat you in FIFA right now, and then I'll never play again. And I did, and I haven't played. Oh, wow. Wow. (laughs) Mind you, I had, like, the best team on the game, and he had, like, the worst team on the game. But it doesn't matter, because I didn't play FIFA, and he played 24-7. So I was like, I'm going to beat you and never play. 
And I did. I retired. And then, and then you played Strikers, and you're like, why does FIFA yeah. even exist? Exactly. I played Mario Strikers when they were like, you can play four of your, with four, three of your friends. And I got on there. I was like, let's go, guys. And then they're like, no, you can't. I was like, they lied to us. <laughs> um, but I will say this. It's really, really difficult. doesn't matter what sports game it is to have someone else come in and do a good job. If you know what I mean? Like for the longest time, American football, we had Madden and 2k going at it. Yep. And it was, that was like really the only time that like the games were close. Mm -hmm. And then I remember 2k was like, we're going to come out with our football game and it's going to be $20 and everybody like blew everybody's mind. I don't remember it, that. Wow. Uh, it was it was a deal. This is when games were fifty dollars, and the NFL two K was like, you know what, our game's twenty dollars this year. Holy and it just, like, crap! Clean house, and it was like holy crap, and it was good. I'm not like growing up. We I kind of went we went back and forth between Madden and two K. Sometimes we bought both, um, but that was also the game where you could get demos on a disc at like EB Games or GameStop, and you could play both of them. Yeah, kind of decide for yep. yourself. When it went to twenty dollars, we were just like, "All right, we're doing two K," and it was like both of them were really good games, and they had to compete against each other. And that has not been the case for any sports game for a long time. Mm. So there's really no competition to Madden. There's really no competition to like NBA two K. They EA tried to make an NBA game for a while, and it was always like utter garbage. And then there's another soccer game. It was like Evolution Soccer. Now it's something else, and they went free to play, and it's garbage. Oh, so was like, that Konami? Was that Konami I, game? I don't remember. But um, Let's see. but it's weird to me that he said FIFA 23. So it's almost like they gave FIFA name to another game that's going to come out this year. Mm. And I don't think this man realizes how bad of a look and feel it's going to be when they come out with a game that's not the FIFA that we know. And people buy that game and it's utter garbage. Mm -hmm. Which is what I feel like it's going to be. Yeah, it was Konami. I feel like it's just going to be garbage whenever an actual FIFA uh, game comes out next. So, maybe not, but probably. <laughs> so, we'll see. I mean, I'm not going to play Fingers either one. Crossed so I Matthew. won't know, but we'll have Matthew on for you FIFA people out there, and he'll tell us. And if he lies, you let us know, and we'll boot him off the show forever. Permanently. <laughs> we don't want any liars on here. No. Um, but that's all that I have for this podcast. Um, but we can talk a little bit about what we've been playing, if you would like. I know oh, we've been playing Marvel Snap. And my, I, my gaming life has been so... I, I didn't play Destiny once last week at all. And Snap was the only thing I played. And that was towards the end of the day when I'm winding down in bed. Like, Yeah. It's been sad. It's also been like it was the end of the, of the Marvel Snap season. Yes. So a lot of people were grinding out stuff. Last season for Marvel Snap was the least I've played, and I really haven't played any hardly this season yet either. Okay. But it's one of those games where like at any moment, you know, it takes it can take over. So I would say I'm consistently playing at least once a day. Um, you know, if my wife and I have plans on the weekends, you know, I might go a couple days without playing, but it's been my consistent since launch for sure. Like I've definitely played it more consistently than destiny, which is blasphemy in itself. But so <laughs> how, are you, how are you feeling about destiny? They came out with their uh, thing. Talk about next season, stuff yeah. like that. We're going to be able to, to, um, what, Focus what exotics. Yeah. Focus um, exotics. That's what I'm so the thing that the thing that sticks out to me is they're not raising the level cap. So does that mean all uh, content moving forward is it at a set difficulty and will will always be probably whatever fifteen levels under and it's always going to just be challenging? Because yeah. you know for the for the for the people in here that aren't Destiny players, um, with this expansion they actually made it harder. So on our uh, new location, our new planet of Neomuna, all the enemies, I think, were like 15 levels above us, no matter what, no matter how, how much we grinded, they were always stronger. Apparently, I don't know. You can't please any, you can't please everybody. The community, I'm pretty sure they said before Lightfall, or when they were announcing when Lightfall was close, that they weren't going to be doing level cap 
yeah. stuff or power cap stuff for seasons anymore. Well, my so. issue is, like I said, the whole we're making the game harder and now they've reverted what they've said. And I'm just like, <laughs> look, listen, listen, listen. I have so much sympathy for Bungie and any other company that has to deal with this. You can't please everybody. So yeah. I don't know if like pleasing the newcomers in this situation is more important than the long runs, because if they make the game easier, aka our everyday uh, exploring and shooting and collecting, just exploring the planet, if they make that easier, all the hardcore players aren't going to leave because of that. You still have the grandmasters yeah. coming in, the master uh, dungeons. There is still hard content. So if they can at least appease the new players coming in then I guess that's why they did what they, what they did. I don't know. Maybe. So. Time will tell. Um, I have liked this expansion besides the story, though. Playing a lot of this. Oh, dude, okay. if you... Yeah, besides the campaign, fantastic. My only... My personal issue is I feel like right in the beginning, I think in the first two weeks, I could be wrong, they released like three or four exotic weapons. I think it was three exotic weapons. I wish they would have kind of like spread those yeah. out like one per week or one every other week. So where it's like, Oh, do you hear this new, uh, whatever this new glaive came out or this new sidearm came out or, you know, mm -hmm. I, I wish I, I, I didn't, I didn't feel they had to go so hard with those, uh, weapons coming out so fast, but, but I mean, that doesn't mean they don't have more coming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. I concur. I think they were trying to like add more content to this expansion to make it yeah. feel like an expansion. Yeah. Maybe. All right. So but, my question for you: Have you played? Yeah, give it. Have you played RE? Your RE four. I played uh, the first probably like 30, 40 minutes. Did it blow your mind? Um, my mind remains unblown, but that's not saying it's not good. Wait, I just what? Haven't, I haven't gotten into it. I hadn't gotten it. I've only played Dang. like the first 30 minutes. I mean, it looks good and it plays good. And I found out that your knife has can break now, which I didn't know before. Um, But I don't know. I played it a little bit. Emily watched me. And then I hit save. And, I, you know, like I said, I've been playing Hunter on Destiny for no reason. So. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. Priorities. <laughs> Priorities. Um, other than that, I definitely just need to take the PlayStation into the living room, hook it up, and knock out these single player games. You know, just have a time. I need to go back to Hogwarts. It's it's literally like it's not like I forgot it. Like literally, almost every other day, it's like, oh man, like <laughs> that game was fun, and you were hooked, and then Destiny came out. Like I know I need to go back to it, and just sit down and beat it. Yeah, and and you need to go back to Marvel's Avengers too. And oh, uh, that was on and sale. Halo Infinite. Yeah, I, I was actually going to um, send you a text because I saw it on sale and I was going to be like, should I get it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like $3 or something. I was like, I think oh, the man. servers, it, everything shuts down in September. So, you know, if you're going to get in there, you better do it now. Man. I mean, it's an experience I'll never have again. It's true. I, I am part of the Anthem crew, so. I'm, you know, good. Good for you. See, like, so here's a, and, and, and you know, it's funny. Every time we like end the podcast, like you'll, you'll, you'll ask me for final thoughts. And a lot of the times I'm like, pace yourself. There's a lot of games, play one game at a time. And I'm the guy that's like, okay, I'm getting these three games this year. I'm getting destiny. I'm getting Hogwarts. I'm getting RE4. You know what? RE4 is out and I still haven't bought it. I still haven't bought dead space. And do you know what's around Same. the corner? Zelda. I have to decide, am I getting Zelda? I can say here today on this podcast, I'm getting Zelda. But will I buy Zelda? Because I know it's 70 bucks. And I don't agree yeah. that it's 70 bucks. Like, I don't know what's happening to me as a gamer, man. There's just too many games. There's and I keep saying games. I'm going to, I say I'm going to get something and then I don't do it. Yep. But that's okay. Because then when you do get it, you can find it on sale. You know what I mean? True. Very true. Like Dead Island's a $70 game. And Redfall comes out like two weeks after or something like that. I'm like, I don't know if I want to spend seventy dollars as much as a Dead Island fan that I am. But then it came out today, like they don't even it doesn't have crossplay. Like Matthews has it for free on PC with whatever PC part that he bought. Yeah. So it's like, well, that's great. Well, we can't do crossplay. So now it's just like a I'm definitely gonna wait 
until this game's like 15 bucks. Yeah. And probably later this year. <laughs> and then, like, but I know for a fact, for a thousand percent fact, I'm going to play Redfall because it's on Game Pass, so that, I don't yeah, have yeah. any reason not to. Don't pay yeah. for it. Diablo 4 is going to suck my life for a very, very long time. <laughs> that's the game that comes out at the beginning of June, I think. And it's going to be the game that's just going to be like all summer. Like, I'm going to put see, down Destiny, Rocket League, and Overwatch for this well, game. Well, so here's my thing. So say you get Zelda in May. I don't have a Switch anymore, so that's not happening. Oh, shoot. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. Okay. But say, you know, they come out with the Switch 2 by May, then I'll, we'll, I'll consider it. So, like, I feel I feel if I get Zelda, it's going to be Hogwarts Part 2. Because, like you said, once Diablo hits... It's just like a re- it's like everything else is just getting to the wayside. Yeah, like, I'm so excited for Diablo. Did you play? I, I didn't play the beta. I purposely did not play the beta. Okay, I didn't play it. I searched uh, Google search to see if your character carries over from the beta to the main game, and it doesn't. But they're like, you get like some. Hey, you played the beta, so you get these items. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, I'm just not going to play the beta. I watched some people play it for like 30 minutes, and I was like, I'm in. I don't want to see anything else about this game until it comes out, and I want to just go in it to win it, you know? Yeah. I've heard nothing but, like, fantastic things about it. Everybody that's played the beta or played the alpha or whatever, which is, like, this game is going to be, like, this is a game of the year contender for sure. So I'm and, you know, and you know what's the worst part is, like, I'm going to set my friends off because I'm probably going to play with a controller on PC. And they're going to be like, up. what is wrong with you? Because you know what? When I first, when I played Diablo 3 on PC... I couldn't get into it for some reason. I don't know what it was on PS4. I played it with a controller and I was like, it clicked. I don't, I don't know why it just, clicked. I don't know why. Cause this is the superior way to play video games. See in 1800 BC, they made these things called a mouse keyboard. You know what I mean? Oh my like God. when, when computers were first hitting there, like, you know what? We need something. We need to be able to point and click at something, you know? But then video games happen, you know, like real video games. Like Nintendo came out with a console, okay, and with this little guy called Mario. You okay, know what I mean? <laughs> and what did they do? They made a controller because they're like, you know what, we have to play, we have to make something for video games, you know. So they made a controller, and so since then, you know, people just played on controllers. It's okay, crazy. but 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 Andrew, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> I converted from controller to mouse and keyboard with Destiny. I cannot play on a controller anymore. I can't. The oh. movement, the aiming, the precision, night and day. Night and day. You feel the same so, way about the Wiimote too? No. What about VR? <laughs> I do get it because like when I played Resident Evil in VR, I was like, I can headshot everything. I just got to look at the head. You know. I mean? Yep. Yep. It was a good time. It's also rumored that they're making Resident Evil 4 remake for PSVR 2. So. Oh, see, see, we've talked about that. We've talked about, like, if if there would just be one title to sell the PSVR 2, hotcakes, if that that's came Another out. thing, yeah, that's hot another cakes. thing about this PlayStation showcase that's supposedly going to blow people's minds is how much VR stuff are they going to show? Have they had something? Because this is, like, how PlayStation showcases are, like, this is going to be the next three or four years of like PlayStation mm-hmm. like this. If you're going to buy a PS five now, or you have one, like this is what's to come kind of like they did when, the, when it first came out. Yeah. So it's like, do you even mention VR? Like if we did this whole showcase and there's not one VR game, I'm going to be, it's going to be, or is it going to be a bunch of games? Like here's this game, whether it's third party or first party or whatever it's like and you can also play it on playstation vr i mean they have to at this point i mean like i don't know what the numbers are now but i'm assuming it's not doing that great and the only way they're gonna they're gonna pump those numbers up is is software you know what i'm saying so they they have to they have to come swinging they have to show some stuff on that showcase they really do i saw an article let me see them this was eight days ago on forbes as well um Bloomberg 
God, I got to add, dang it. A new Bloomberg piece has published based on estimates from research firm IDC, which says that the PSVR 2 may sell around 270,000 units from its February 22nd release through the end of March. Okay. And I think, uh, okay. How does that compare to the original PSVR? Um, the first official numbers we got from Sony was that it had sold 915,000 units between October 2016 and February 2017, four months after its debut. So Okay. Um, 270,000 in sales in its first five weeks may indicate a pace that ends up being below the original PSVR. Uh, I just don't like, it's $550. Dude, people are holding I feel like out the, because there's not enough reason to get it. I feel like the, a lot of these 270,000 people, like they were going to buy it, whether it was a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars. Yeah. Matter. So. I can't like if you told me nice by the end of April it's at three hundred thousand that would make more sense. They, yeah. I mean, they're gonna either have to do a major price drop, or at this PlayStation Showcase. If they come out this PlayStation Showcase for me personally, and there's not a single exclusive PSVR two game that I want personally want to play, I'm just Meta Quest. That's where I'm going. Oh, nail but, in the coffin then for that showcase for you. I'm, I'll be waiting for the next meta quest, which is supposedly happening at some point this year. So, because I mean, 90 at that point, 95% of the games are on both. So it really doesn't matter. You heard it here first. And I don't want to, I'd rather pay $500 for one that's wireless and looks just as good, which is probably what. Oh, 100%. 100%. Any final thoughts before we end this thing out? Man, I just gave you 15 minutes of final thoughts. Any, any more? <laughs> uh, go it's see Mario. Fun. That's awesome. Go see Mario. It's a great go movie. See Mario. There's a lot of movies coming out I want to see. Uh, Evil Dead will be the next one. Oh, that looks cool. Out. No, see, so you know Dead. what I was saying to my wife? I was like, I can't wait till Monday to see how much money Mario's made. Like, it's going to be ridiculous how much money that movie's going to make. Yeah, Ridiculous. we were looking for. I was looking for tickets. I was like, everything sold out because most thing, most AMC's have recliners here, mm-hmm. and so it's like less seats, or whatever. I was like, so we ended up going to like the big jumbo theater with like a million seats, and uh, sat in front of uh, children and sat beside children. So, well, I would tell you my situation was different. I was surrounded by adults that were talking the entire time. So I guess there's. There's no difference. I told Emily, like, There's look no around difference. the theater. We have, we have literally like five year olds all the way up to like grown people. Seeing this yeah, movie right now. the people I was sitting to my right were just two du- dudes my age. And anytime anything action based happened, he was like, "Oh shoot!" He probably said, "Oh shoot!" forty eight <laughs> times in this movie. <laughs> the beginning when like like we've seen in the in the first trailer when Bowser like melts the penguin ice place or whatever. Oh shoot! It's over and over. Did you, uh, did you, okay, this is, this isn't a spoil, but it, this is, this is information for you. Did you stay for the two, two scenes? I tried to, I got Emily to stay for one. Okay. She was ready to go. The second one was more significant than the first one. I read, I read about it. I read okay. what it was. Okay. Um, and I was like, I'll just find a, someone's cell phone footage. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we want to thank everybody for listening. A uh, new podcast again every Friday, wherever you want to get your podcast at. If you could hit that subscribe button for us over on YouTube.com, give us a like, give us a comment, do all that stuff. We're at YouTube.com backslash at log on games. That would be very helpful. But that's going to do it for us here. We will be with you again next Friday. See you. Oh, let's break it.